Now in this video, we're going to look at how to create a Revit counter family. First, we're going to look at uh, selecting a template that we're going to use for the family file. And then we're going to look at how to set up the parameters and extrude the geometry that we need to create a counter family. First, we're going to go to the family category. And from below here, we're going to select new. And since I'm living in Canada, we use metric systems. So we're using the metric template and I'm going to select the metric casework family. I'm going to select open. And this is the template we're going to start with for creating the counter family. Now let's open up the family type dialog box and see what parameters uh, is available inside this template file. We have three parameters, depth, height, and width. Now, if we highlight one of these uh, parameters and go on these uh, at the parameter icon here, click on it, and you can see that uh, the name of the parameters and the parameter type is type and instance. And you can see that because this is uh, original embedded into this template, you cannot change the parameter type from uh, type to instance. Okay, so there's two parameters in here which we cannot use for our counter uh, kitchen counter family. The reason being is that we need those uh, parameter type to be instant rather than type only. And all the, one of them is the height because uh, we may have different uh, counter to be installed at different heights. So rather than having a type for the height, we need an instant parameter for controlling the counter height. And also the width, as you can see in here, basically is the length of the counter. And quite often we have a different length of counter in the same project. So uh, having too many different lengths as a type parameter will become a management issue. So I would not be able to use the width to control the length of the counter in this instance. So we're going to create additional instant parameter to control these kind of uh, dimension for our uh, kitchen counter. Now I'm going to create a new instant parameter for controlling the counter uh, installation height and also a new instant parameter for controlling the, the length of the counter. So in here, in this uh, icon, I'm going to click create new parameters and I'm going to type in counter height for the parameter name. And I'm going to make sure that I click on instance category and uh, it's going to be in the common discipline and the data type is going to be length and it's going to group under uh, dimension category. Let's select OK. And I'm going to create another one. This is going to be for the counter length. And it's going to be instant parameters and I'm going to leave the default setting and select OK. Now we need one more parameter to, to control the, the rendering material of the counter. So we're going to click on here, create new parameters. And again, this is going to be instant parameter, but the data type is going to be material. So we're just going to type in here for the parameter name, counter material. And select OK. So it's under, uh, it's going to be under material and finish category. Now there's one more parameter we need to control the geometry of the counter is the counter thickness. So again, we're going to click in these uh, create new parameter icon. And then we're just going to type in for the parameter name to be counter thickness. And it's going to be a uh, type parameters. And we're going to leave all the other setting to be default and select OK. And we have counter thickness. So we have the basic parameter we need for creating this counter family. Now I'm going to close the family type dialog box and replace the 
some of the existing parameter with the new parameter we just created. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to click on the width parameter. I'm going to click in here the drop down. So instead of using width, I'm going to select these uh, reference plane going to be controlled by counter length. Uh, so now it's changed to counter length, counter depth. We're going to depth we're going to use. Now, if we look at the front elevation height rather than just height, we're going to click on this dimension. And from the drop down here, we're going to change this to counter height. Now we're going to create additional uh, reference plane in here. I'm going to type RP and put in our reference plane underneath the top of the counter. And then I'm going to go to annotate and click on align dimensions on the annotate tab, align dimension. And I'm going to put dimension in here, 102. Now it's 102, but typically our uh, count is most likely going to be about one and a half inch, about 38 millimeter. And I'm going to click on these uh, dimension again. And then in here, click on a drop down and say counter thickness. So that will control the thickness of the counter. Now, before we go much further, we should always check to make sure that all the parameter is working properly. Now, since we are already in this elevation view, I can open up the parameter type family type dollar box, make this a little bit smaller. So just to confirm that if this is working properly, so counter height, let's say this is not going to be 900, say this is going to be 1000 millimeter high, and select apply. Now it's moving up. So we'll change it back to uh, 900 for now. Apply, it is moving. So counter thickness is 38. So let's say we want it to be about one inch, so 25 millimeter. And select apply. And you can see that the reference plane is moving, the parameters is updating. So it seems to be working. So I'm going to change it back to 38 millimeter and select apply. And Select OK. Now we go back to the reference view, level plan view, and then do the same thing. Make sure everything is working properly. So that is 600. So if I want it to be 610, apply. Now, typically our kitchen counter is about 25 inches. So actually, if you want, you can actually enter imperial units in this uh, uh, parameter as well. So right now the unit setting in this uh, template file is metric in millimeter units. So if you want to type in 25 inch, you can just type in 25 inch and it will give you the metric equivalent 635. And we're going to select apply. It's working correctly. Now that we have these uh, parameter working, now we can actually extrude our geometry. Now we're just going to do a simple extrusion to create our counter. Now you can do it in different way. You can do a sweep, but in this instance, because we're just starting to build a simple rabbit family, assuming that you guys are not very experienced at this time. So we use the simplest method to create a counter geometry. So I'm going to click on the create tab and select extrusion command in here. And in the sketch, uh, option, I'm going to click the rectangular sketch tool. I'm just going to click upper left corner of the, of the intersection of these two reference plane and drag it down to the lower right corner here in the intersection of these other two reference plane. And you can see that that's four lock icon should just show up. So I'm going to click on all the icon to lock it down. So the sketch line is locked to the reference plane. And I'm going to click on the green check mark to finish the extrusion. Now the extrusion has a certain default setting. So it is usually starting on the ground plane and extrude up approximately two to 300 millimeters. So if we go to the, the front elevation, you can see that there's extrusion created in here, but actually our counter should be up here. Now you can always drag the, the grip here to adjust the top of the extrusion and also the bottom extrusion. I usually like to pull the bottom off so that when I use the lock um, align command, it will I would I know that I will be clicking on the bottom of this extrusion rather than possibly uh, clicking on the reference level. 
So now I'm going to lock the top of this extrusion to the top of the counter and also the bottom of the extrusion to the bottom of this uh, reference plane representing the location of the bottom of the counter. So we're going to go to in the modify tab, select this align tool, align command. So I'm going to click at the top reference plane and then click on this top edge of the extrusion. And now I can click on the lock symbol to lock it down. I'm going to click on these uh, reference plane below the top of the counter reference plane and then click on the bottom of the extrusion. And now, and then click on this symbol to lock it down to this reference plane. So if we look at this in 3D view, we have a very simple rectangular extrusion that representing our counter family. Now to see how it flex. So if we go open up the family type dialog box, uh, counter links is 900. So if you want to, okay, let's try to make sure that it's working correctly. So I'm going to type in 1220 millimeter, four feet, let's select apply. So this is flexing correctly. And if we want to change counter height to, let's say 1100, and select apply. You can see it moved up, change it back to 900, apply. So it's moving down and adapt. Let's say we want to change this to be about 900 as well. Apply, you can see that the devil the kind of change. So this is working correctly. So I'm just change this back to uh, 635 and change the counter height, oops, uh, to 915, which is approximately 46 inches. And then select apply. Now, because we want to select, uh, we want to set up different types of counters so that we can easily uh, place them in a model with different types. Sometimes you have uh, just a standard uh, counter over the the base cabinet and sometimes you have counter that including uh, a breakfast bar or a seating area at the front so there may be different depth so right now i'm going to click on this family type uh, command dialog box here and create a new type right now this type for a simple um, counter that go for these base cabinet i'm going to set the depth to be uh, 635 so I'm just going to type in 635 millimeter depth and you can actually uh, also give an indication at 915 millimeter above finished floor F dot F so that's our first type now if you want to have another type we can create this create a new type Let's say you have a breakfast or eating area in front of the counter, then this will be about a 30 inches counter. So I'm just going to type 900 millimeter depth at the same height, 915 millimeter, about finish row, a dot f dot f dot and select OK. And now I'm going to change the depth to be 900 and select Apply. OK, so now we have two different counter type. Now it's a good time to test these uh, family uh, in a blank project file before you use it in your project. So let's do that next. Now I'm going to go to the File tab and select New uh, Project. Let's save this uh, file. I'm going to put it on my desktop for now. And this is the, let's see, this is the kitchen counter. Let's save this. And I'm going to use the architectural template as a test uh, project file. Once it's open, I can use the control tab to toggle back to my uh, counter family uh, file. And I'm going to select load into the project. 
So now I'm creating a calendar. So I can click in here. Now, if I do that, I can actually go to a property tab and see what type I'm creating. I'm creating a typical uh, calendar, which is 635 millimeter deep. I'm going to place one here and place another one here. Now I can actually click on this one and drag the grip to make it different length. And here I can also drag it a different length. Now I can also change the counter type by clicking here and from the property, click on a drop down here. So 900 and 915. So if we look at this from the front elevation, right now if we do a dimension, which is 900, and this one should be 635. Okay, so if we look at it from the front elevation in here, go to view. So let's just move these uh, elevation reference up here. And if we do a dimension from the level to the top of the counter, it's 915. So actually it's behaving correctly. Now let's go back to our uh, family file. We're going to add another feature to it. So using control tab. Now we're back into this uh, family file, kitchen counter. Now, if we look at the instance, sometime when we have kitchen counter against the wall, um, in the older days, we have a backsplash so that you will keep the water from uh, getting into the wall where the wall may be painted with plaster and that would damage the wall. So let's do that as an option here. So if we go back to the reference level, the plan level, and we're going to need a couple more parameters to control the backsplash. So if we actually uh, go into in here, we're going to create new parameters. And this is going to be a uh, type parameter. Backsplash height, and it's going to select OK, and then we're going to uh, actually we don't necessarily have to include thickness because we can make this a constraint dimension rather than parameters. Because sometimes when you don't need to change the thickness or change a certain dimension, you should not apply a parameter to it. It will just make things a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm going to make this to be three and a half inch. So I can just type 3.5 inch in here and see what's the metric equivalent. So 88.9. So I'm just going to make it 90 millimeter. Okay. Let me select OK. Now I'm going to do an R reference plane here, RP, to control the thickness of the backsplash. So I'm going to do a dimension in here. You can go to uh, annotate and click on align dimension, or I can just type DI for my keyboard, for the keyboard shortcut. So I want this to be 20 millimeter thick. So I'm gonna click on the reference plane and then click on the dimension 20. Now bear in mind that you should always click on the thing you want to move before the dimension will become available for you to adjust the position. Because if you just click on a dimension, a uh, dimension is attached to two things, the program does not know which item you want to move, so it's not going to change that uh, adjustable dimension setting. So if we click in here, click on the reference plane, and you can see that the dimensions text allow you to click and modify. Okay, but we're going to lock it down so they won't move. Now, if we look at the left side, let's go to the left side view, and we're going to do another reference plane in here to control the backsplash height. So we're going to go to zoom, zoom in a little bit. So DI again for my keyboard. And I'm just going to hit escape to finish creating dimension. Click on the dimension and then from the drop down backsplash height. So this is 90. 
now we can go to the 3d view now we can do this in two ways we can do just another extrusion to create a backsplash or we can do a sweep along the edge of the counter to create a backsplash let's try to create a sweep so i'm just going to try to uh, click on the create tab and then select sweep and then i can say in here sketch path or pick path i'm going to pick on the pick path option here and pick on the back edge of the counter here and then the path is created and now we're going to click on the green check mark to finish the, so creating the path and now we want to uh, by sketch and we want to click on add a profile now we can sketch a profile of our backsplash now let's do that on the left elevation in here we're just going to do a simple rectangle using the rectangle sketch tool again pick on the intersection here and then drag it up and do it here and lock down all four reference plane there's always four sometimes this this one is straight out here and then we're going to select ok and then click on the green check mark again to finish the extrusion so let's take a look in 3d view so this is also the extrusion so this is the counter now the other thing what we can do is to assign the material now if you don't want to see this joint line you can use the joint geometry tools but when, after you've done the joint geometry tool you cannot have the option of turning the backsplash on and off individually now sometimes when you don't want to have the backsplash as an option uh, for the counter you can actually assign a uh, a parameter to turn this item uh, this component on and off if you like so to do that we're going to click on the family type command dialog box and we're going to add another parameter so we're going to click on create new parameters now you can do that from here there's an alternative way to create parameter which i want to show you i'm just going to cancel out here i'm going to click on this extrusion and from the property panel, you can see that the visibility is on by default. Now, if I go over here to this little button here, I can click on the associate family parameters and I can create new parameters. I'm just going to click in here, say, create new parameters for the visibility. I want it to be an instant parameter. So I can have it on and off on each instant of the counter I created in the project. So I'm just going to type in backsplash. And it's going to be in the other group under other, it's going to be a yes, no parameters, and it's group under other category. But if you want to find this uh, parameter in a different uh, category in here, you can say identity data and so all this layer but i usually just keep it in the other category so it's easy to find so again select ok select ok and we're going to have to assign these uh materials so we're going to click on the backsplash and click on the main counter and then from the property uh, panel here we're going to click on this and select counter material so that these two extrusion material will be controlled by that parameters now that we have the backsplash uh, created in this uh, counter family uh, let's load it back into the project to test to see if it's working correctly so i'm going to click on load into project and it's going to ask me override existing version override existing version and its parameters I'm going to click on override the existing version and its parameter. And you can see that there's a double line at the top here indicating the backsplash is on. So if we look at it from my isometric view, so this is the backsplash. Well, it looks rather high, high. So we can actually go in here, adjust the type. So come in here, edit type, and then let's look at the backsplash. Height is 176. So it's way too high so we want it to be about three and a half inch so i'm just going to type in 3.5 inches which is going to be a 90 millimeter apply and you can see that it's go back to 90 millimeter now if we're going to turn it off so because our visibility is an 
instant parameters. So I click on this counter and I can actually copy this. Let's see if I can copy this to illustrate the difference between type and instant parameter. So in each instant, I can turn on the backsplash individually. So if I click in here, backsplash is off. So I turn on backsplash on this one, but not the other one. So that's the difference between instant and type parameters. Now, this is the basic process of creating a Revit counter family. So I'm trying to keep this very basic. In the future, I will be doing videos on adding more feature to these families so you can see how more complicated uh, parameters and uh, geometry can be added or functionality can be added to the to these kind of uh, Revit families. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.